today's video, I wanted to talk about a very popular topic among African cichlid keepers, and that is dealing with aggression. There's actually been a lot of aggression in this tank today, but that has actually not been the case lately due to some things that have happened to upset the hierarchy in this tank. And I wanted to talk about that and a little bit about how that affected the behavior of the fish in this tank, as well as give you a six month update on the tank and a little bit of future plans for it as well. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. First of all, as you can see, other than some fish kind of huddling around me thinking I'm about to feed them, the fish are swimming freely and calmly around the whole tank, except for maybe a little bit of bickering back and forth among random fish, which is totally normal and totally fine. As long as one fish is not getting picked on to injury or death, it's all really pretty normal. And right now I have a pretty good homeostasis going on in this tank. I wanted to talk about how we got to that point with these fish. First of all, let's talk about how it was for a while. For the first few months of this tank being set up, most of the fish would huddle up over in this side while the Malawi eye biter would kind of patrol far side of the tank or whoever was kind of the tank boss at that time, which is typically the eye biter. He would take over the far side of the tank while everyone else would kind of huddle up in this small corner here. So like I said, the first few months I had this tank set up, the Malami Eye Biter was the mean tank boss kind of picking on everybody. And then randomly a few months ago when I came down here, I found him lying dead in the bottom of the tank, which was kind of a surprise since he's typically the aggressor. There was no sign of injury or illness. So it was surprising to see, but unfortunately, these things do happen in the hobby. So after the eye biter died, the fish definitely settled down a little bit more and they started swimming freely and more calmly like you see now, kind of spreading out around the whole tank, which was awesome to see. It's always a lot better when the, the tank hierarchy is a lot more spread out, not with one big aggressive fish dominating all the others. So it was kind of an ideal situation at that time. But unfortunately, as the new hierarchy started to take place, we did have one fish step up and it's not a fish that I would have ever guessed. I actually got this tangerine tiger when most of these guys were a lot smaller and not collared up. I was dying to get some color in this tank and even though I wanted a predator hat tank, the more color typically came from common haps or like peacocks early on. So my impatience led me to get a common hap, which is the tangerine tiger, that was already colored up and did not have a reputation for a lot of aggression, so I felt comfortable putting him in with some smaller fish. Well, as you know, if you've been following this channel, we've told you over and over again that each individual fish kind of has their own personality and you never know what you're gonna get. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. We tried to talk about the aggression levels and temperament of different kinds of fish, but in the end, with cichlids, especially African cichlids, it all kind of depends on the individual fish. Well, it turns out that my tangerine tiger was a very aggressive tangerine tiger. And even though he's one of the smallest fish in this tank, he's kind of been the one to pick on a lot of the bigger predator haps in this tank who are actually a lot more calm. So after the eye biter died, there was a little bit of a peace time for a few weeks. And then after the hierarchy kind of settled, the tangerine tiger is doing kind of what he's doing right now, kind of huddling, taking over one full half of the tank with all the other big predator halves taking the other half of the tank. And I was back to square one, right where I was with the Malawi eye biter with one fish dominating half the tank and the other fish running away scared. So ideally in these situations, you have a quarantine tank or a smaller tank set up at all times. Just in case of these situations, you can take out the aggressive fish or maybe a fish that's been picking on so you can nurse them back to health. But unfortunately, I do not have a quarantine set up or another African cichlid tank at the moment. So my hands were kind of tied with what to do about this tangerine tiger situation. So after the Malawi eye biter died, and the tangerine tiger took over the tank, what I noticed was my three smallest fish were huddling in a corner, definitely acting scared, stressed, and picked on. And that was my Rhodesia yellow, my Taiwan reef, and my red empress. So they were all pretty small, not very colored up, and they would always hide in the shadows and the cracks and crevices of the tank. I was pretty worried that one of those fish were gonna die. Turns out the Rhodesia yellow ended up not eating for a couple weeks. I could not get him to start eating again, and unfortunately, he died. And what happened after that was pretty interesting. After the Rhodesia yellow died, the tank hierarchy was reset again, and I was expecting after 
everybody to kind of find their place. The tangerine tiger would kind of take over again and be very dominant and aggressive. What has actually happened since the Rhodesia yellow died is what you kind of see here. The tangerine tiger is still aggressive. He's still got his own territory. He loves this sand that he always messes with in the bottom of the tank, but he's not being as aggressive to the other fish. Typically, the other fish are swimming around freely and calmly among the whole tank. They are not huddled into one corner. And one theory I have on that is that if you have fish that are all healthy and of similar size and aggression levels, you are probably going to tend to deal with that mean tank boss less. So I think the tangerine tiger and some other fish kind of sensed the stress in my Rhodesia yellow who was not eating, that was hiding and scared. And I think that increased the aggression levels and the fighting amongst all the fish and definitely ramped up the aggression level of my tank boss. And so now that the Rhodesia yellow has died and everyone's pretty happy and healthy and calm right now, including the Tyrant Juan Reef and the Red Empress, I think everybody's aggression level is down a little bit and minus the typical bickering back and forth and fighting amongst random fish, it's actually been a much more calm and peaceful tank and it's been a lot more fun to watch. And as you can see, the fish are looking great. My Bucochromus norotania has actually colored up a lot since the Malawi eyebiter died and he's grown a lot. My new Nemochromus venustus that I got a few months ago is looking fantastic and got a lot of blue and yellow and even some black. And my smaller fish, my newer fish, like the Dimediochromus strigatus, the sunset hap, who's so small he's not even colored up, even though when I got him he's six inches. And you can see with him being six inches, really just how big these other fish are that are all pushing about one foot. And I also have a couple other new small common haps, which are the Cyanochromus friar eye and the deep water hap, which are holding their own and looking very comfortable and doing great. So it's great to see. I don't have all fish being the same size, but everybody's feeling happy and healthy. And I think that's just lower the aggression level across the board on the tank and I'm really happy to see it. So with this information, what my plans are going forward for this tank are I plan on removing all my common haps from this tank and probably giving them to Troy, who if you watched his last video, he talked about his new next tank coming up where he's going to do a peacock half mixed tank that I think my common haps will look great in for him. I plan on taking all mine out, giving those to him. I don't know if he wants my tangerine tiger. I don't know if he wants to deal with that aggression possibility, but it might do better in a new tank and a new setup where he's not dealing with the same personalities of fish. He might be okay. I will probably get online and I cut that. So going forward with this tank, I will just focus on getting larger predatory haps. And at this point, I can't get them small anyway. So I'm just keeping my eyes peeled online and all my favorite fish websites like Cunningham Cichlids, Ron Cichlids, Southeast Cichlids, things like that, for if they have any good new large colored up male specimens of predator haps. And so I have a lot more space to add some more predator haps into this tank. I think that will really help curb aggression levels and keep that at a minimum and make everybody comfortable enough to utilize the whole big 220 gallon tank. So as for a six month update on this tank, these fish have never looked better, happier and healthier. This tank's aggression level has never been lower. Um, and I think that'll just continue to improve and get better as we perfect our stock list in this tank. Also in the near future, I will be setting up a couple new big African cichlid tanks in this basement fish room that will give me a couple of tools to help me when dealing with these aggression issues where I can take out a sick fish or a bully and remove them and reset the tank hierarchy, do things like that. So as always, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.